Hello and welcome everyone to Wanderlust in Wild Mount. Uh, we are here after a week off and we are ready to play and we are very excited. I um, hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving that, that, you know, celebrates Thanksgiving or that you at least endured as I did. So, we're gonna go around, we're gonna say who you are uh, and who are you playing. And we're gonna start, I guess, with myself because I'm talking. I'm Lindy and I'll be playing... Wendell Eustace Abernathy, Lucius Throckwaddle, Hossenpfeffer the fourth of the Havisham Hossenpfeffers. Uh, you know, nobleman, warlock, philanthropist, aspiring author. The, one of the, the, the heads of the prison of power. Almost. You know, it's fine. He's, he's done good work. That's all I can say about him. Um, <laughs> we're gonna go on up to D20 Coup de Gras. How are you doing this evening? I'd say you're more of the neck of the prism of power, but anyway. You know, that is true. That is true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. I'm uh, D20 Coup de Gras. I'll be playing Harlan Flipcloak. Uh, he's a hobgoblin uh, diviner. And um, I'm, uh, I, I have divined that we are going to have a good time tonight. Oh, wasn't that nifty? Oh, somebody shifted somewhere something i'll fix it uh we're gonna go over to igor I knew that would happen how Yay. are you igor i'm doing good i'm ready to play this because it's been a while um for those watching i'm igor half half orc butler he has a hunchback serves his monster which is wendell and he's a very simple man a simple half orc <laughs> um ready to play let's have some fun Let's have some fun indeed. Someone who is always lots of fun, Nuggetosaurus. Unless you're your fellow driver on the road and she's having a bad day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have road rage. You have road rage. Hi, I'm Nuggetosaurus. I hate driving. Um, Same. I'm going to be playing Winter Skill Scene, the Drake Warden Ranger, who is currently um, kind of mi mismatching and, and hodgepodging a bunch of artificers creations so um we'll see what happens with that who knows who knows is i feel like the tagline for travis's character how are you travis uh who knows lindy i'm <laughs> i'm you know I, I come in and out i uh i i phase back and forth i uh hi producer trav here and i'm a kimbo uh tonight i'll be playing uh Oh, Lamont Quinlan, who was an artificer until his, uh, you know, his life got flipped, turned upside down, and then he became well, uh, a rogue. I thought, you, I thought you would like to take uh, a minute and sit right there and tell you how you became no the dark that stalks the night. The terror what strikes in the dark. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Of, of Bel Air. Yes. Of, well, of Iman. I mean, right. Of I this, could write a whole song about setting. this, but you don't want me to, so keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've gone and done it now. Uh, anyway, what? He's a freaking rogue, and I, he's he's a complete pain in the ass. Back to you. Thank you. And um, we're all a pain in the ass sometimes, to whomever our dungeon master might be. And tonight our dungeon master is Deception Check. How are you? I, I, well, I'm starting off okay. We'll just see where you guys lead us this evening. And then ask me afterwards, and I'll let you know the real answer. Hi, I'm Deception Check. Uh, I happen to be the dungeon master for this wonderful game we call Wanderlust and Wild Mount. Um, I have a dog in my lap who's decided to arrange herself a different way now and is making me move. Thank you. Good timing there. I'm introducing myself. Thank you. All right. Lap is cleared. So, um, Yeah. I'm the DM. This is the game. Uh, last week, actually not last week, last time we played, the characters had successfully defeated the Grand Master, found out that it was really just basically a closet in a suit that had had all the power go to its head. What's it was his name, and Wintress has adopted him. Uh, that's not going to go wrong in any way, shape, or form. After Wendell had co-opted the entire monastery the the trust body into his cult um he moved prism back. of power not a pyramid scheme it's a trickle up power effect it, yes all of all of that yes um yes wendell is the neck 
right? That's the neck. Like, is that yeah. okay? Um, or is that a gizzard? I, I don't know. I, I'm never sure. Um, he's not so. a gizzard. He's a warlock. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's been one of those days. Let's go. All right. So then, uh, everybody else, uh, Wintress and Harlan went through the open door behind the throne to see where it led. It led to a room with five brains in jars, which happened to be the remains of Bramsandi's group uh, of adventurers who were killed on their way to this particular place. He liked them and didn't want them to die. So what do every good artificer do? Uh, what will an artificer do if their friends are dead and they have no way to give them bodies yet? Stick their brains in jars, of course, and make them the control center for the entire floating island, which they still are. And they want bodies. But luckily... Gearbox can interface with the machine and now has purpose and is running the machine, thereby allowing the brains to have a body if one is provided for them. But once everybody else got together and they talked with the brains for a bit, they found out that there's treasure on an island just off this island floating 500 feet above the ground uh, as they are. They hopped across some tensor floating disks, made it all the way to this wrecked island full of refuse and broken pieces that looked like they were ripped from the mechanisms and walls of the island they had just left. And in the center was a building. That building has the original brain to the spine devil that was the Grand Master. And the book that they're looking for from Brunsandi. But however, it's trapped. And the only way to get it is to either release the brain by giving his old body back, which would bring a bone devil back to full power right next to you, or somehow figure out to remove the book on your own, except it's booby trapped and will cause the entire island to fall from the sky in no time. I have, I, I have a third option. Yes. We move the island. Hmm. There's also a fourth option. <laughs> Lamont like, just circumvents the, the circuit. However, I feel like this fourth option would be best done tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, where we left off last week, uh, the last image we had was one of Wintress's uh, artificer-created, rebuilt creatures handing a mechanical flower up to Igor, who was sitting alone off to the side, looking lonely and forlorn. And this horrible looking but lovely creature was just trying to make a friend. Meanwhile, Lamont had noticed through his skills and knowledge that it would be possible to bypass the booby traps on this particular machine that would allow them to remove the journal without having to leave it here and copying it over and all those things. And also not falling out of the sky, killing everyone, which is probably the worst case scenario. Before he could do anything, Harlan said, you should wait for a moment. And that's where we'll pick up. Lamont, you've had a spark of inspiration. You could, with the proper application of your skills, bypass the circuit that is being run through this journal. You know that if it's removed, the circuit is completed, and then the machine will turn off and the island will fall immediately from the sky. But if you do it correctly, you can make it work and you can walk away with a journal and anything else in this room without having to deal with the brain. You feel drawn to it. Oh no. Uh. What do you do? All of you see him looking intently at this. All of you who are he, currently he still in the building. He was talking about it. He was talking yes. about it. So I feel Winters like we're all is outside though. Minus Wintress and Igor, because Igor's getting a flower. Uh, imagine the three the three scientists in the room. Wendell's not, but he likes to think himself one. Uh, are, are close to Lamont and his examinations as he's explaining what he could do. I'm telling you, it's just, it's, I put tab A into slot B and we just pop the lock and be done with this. I mean, it's... it's what if there's um, some sort of... Uh, trap or uh something you're not seeing there i mean there is a 
chance the whole thing gets cut and we drop out of the sky. In, in which case, you know, those of us with cloaks will deploy them and, and glide <laughs> safely to the ground. But the, the but I don't I, think I don't that's think how that's cloaks work, Lamont. I think if we were to fall, I'm pretty sure we'd be fine. But what about all the? There's that to consider. There are beings outside. I find there are a lot of innocent lives on this thing. So, so that's a good point. All right. And didn't point you two. want to use this as a workshop? And also, that would be just grand. That would be pretty cool. I mean, look at this place. There's so much here left to discover. You know, this doesn't need to be done right now. Why well, don't we, you know, have dinner? If you could let me open it. I mean, just bring me a body and I'd, I'd you, give it to you. It says the brain in a jar. Mm -hmm. I will not shush. I am the leader and controller of this island. I am just temporarily indisposed. We're going to have to get rid of <laughs> Yes. <laughs> in the life of something like me, this is merely a blink in my existence. Mm. Now give me a body. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it really yeah. seems like a blink in his life. <laughs> All right. And Wendell's like, I don't want to banish him and send him back to hell because then he can come back in a new body. That sounds terrible. So I think the best alternative is just leaving him trapped here and we just cast silence on him permanently at some point in the future. Out of character. That's what I <laughs> think is the best option. He would hate that so much. Um, probably <sighs> try to wreak uber revenge on us at some point. But we do need to, we do need to maybe perhaps make some mechanical bodies. I don't, just, if you must do this now, at least let me help you. Yes, same. Yeah. I mean, I could eat, I can't eat, but if I'll watch y'all eat. We don't have to do this like this instant. This is... No, we are not in a rush. Um, I think I'll just hang out in here. Just a, a bit. I'm a bit drained for the day, you know. We we did fight that. Well, uh, what's it? it? Kind of. I just point at the brain, or at least his body, and boy, it was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Surprised you survived. I'm surprised we did also, but we did get some cool ass bracelet thingies. I don't. Who do, who do we give those to? Is it? I think is that, has them. You took my teleportation circles. <laughs> no, 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 no. We claimed them. You were stealing. No, the very right, items right. that I have given sweat and blood for uh, not mine of course other people's but it's still it's mine <laughs> no we we we, we claim them yes you bested your body in combat and therefore you know with the victors didn't damage it did you oh it's not a body anymore <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. quite did damage it yes i thought yeah. we told you this we did no <laughs> We totally uh, did. <laughs> didn't specify the amount of damage. We said you wouldn't want it back because it wasn't really a body anymore. That's that's rather vague, really. It's quite ruined, I assure you. Yes, it's not. <laughs> you do know I still have access to the repulsor engine on the bottom side of this island, correct? As it sputters and you feel the whole island shake for a second. <laughs> And that's a perfect way of getting your body back. Threatening <laughs> us. Or getting a new body. I don't think you can have the old one back. It's new. Are you going to destroy your own brain jar? Yes, I know where I'll end up. Are you guys coming along? Oh, no, no. What? I won't end up in hell. My, my, I'm spoken for. <laughs> my, my... <laughs> Is that so? Oh, yes. That means when you die, someone else gets you. Yes. Mm, I love keeping them alive. <laughs> so go ahead, pull, pull, pull the cable there, dark and brooding. 
Can't wait to see you fall out of the sky and release me from this prison. Wait, we pull this one right here. No, oh, pull, pull any of them. If falling out of the sky would release you from the prison, why didn't you just do that in the first place? I know. <laughs> because he wanted his he wanted his body back. <laughs> because he um, thought it was so cool. I was bluffing. I don't actually have controls. I, I have figured that's like that. Fun. I figured yes. <laughs> just give me my body. <laughs> he really is just mega imprisoned, and I love it. <laughs> well, we do need to make. We did say we'd make some bodies, so perhaps we should. I can help with that. that. I can. And you see, like, little arms start moving, things being built and screwed mm -hmm. in. I have control of this entire room. Mm -hmm. I can help with anything if you just promise to make me one. Oh. Why couldn't you, you know, I'm not even going to give you <laughs> I'm not even going to, why couldn't you make your own body then? <laughs> exactly, like. Because I don't have the schematics that are in the oh. book. Oh, I see. I can't see it from over here. Oh. Oh, he, can, he can open it, but it only shows away from him. <laughs> he faces away the entire time. I will, give, I will give Brumsandi some credit. This is pretty great. <laughs> as long as you're not the one stuck, it's pretty hilarious. Um, well, I mean, if he has control, couldn't he have put a, a reflective surface? Whatever. You know? <laughs> they, don't re they don't reach that far away. It's literally outside of his reach, it's out facing away. <laughs> How does a brain see anyways? I don't know. We, whatever. No, that's, it's, yeah. I have sensors. Oh, I see. The sensors are, are on the opposite side of the room. <laughs> Just all Blind the sight way. does not help read a book. That is true as well. Yep. I right. mean, you could, tap, you could tap the cover for me and I could see what I could see, but... Oh. No, <laughs> just... <laughs> we're just waiting on the bottom at this yeah. point. Yeah, <laughs> like to, uh, since you don't eat, perhaps craft some bodies. Well, we didn't need the schematics. Let's just get, let's just break for break for dinner. Think on, think on some things, you know. Think yeah. thoughts. Maybe explore the rest of the, the places. The, maybe the forbidden places that we weren't allowed access to earlier. Yes, they're no longer forbidden to us. No, Although, no, the, the, that place where all the screaming was coming from. I remember you and Wintress wanted to investigate that, Laurent. It's cool with me. All right. Well, we'll be back. <clears throat> I'll be waiting. Because <laughs> literally there's nothing else for me to do. Yes, it seems so. <laughs> Bring me a body, please. Yeah, we're getting on that right now. I can be very grateful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he'll reward us with murder. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you, right. I made sure you wound up in my section of the Nine Hills. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so where do you head? Back across the discs? Yeah, well, I, I mentioned that. Igor, Winterest, uh, lunch, and did you want to see the the for the off limits places earlier. You remember the place where all the screaming was that you thought maybe a demon party would interest? Did you want to? Eagle was like half grabbing the flower from the little thing, and it kind of like, oh, I mean, that sounds good. Look you see this. the little misshapen, like big eye, small eye. Could, could you just wave up at everyone? Thank you oh, for little charming. flower. It's so it's so disturbing. It's cute. Thank you for little flower, my friend. He's like pat pat pat. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of, that's a little bounce around happy dance. Mm, uh, you need something in return, I think, for this. And uh, Eagle <clears throat> will uh, reach into his pocket and he'll give him a metal coin, just a, a gold coin, basically. You see, you see it grab it, and when it's one big arm, one small arm, and mm -hmm. look up, and you you see like little oil come from one of the big eyes, like a tear. Oh. And then it just runs <laughs> off into a corner. Really happy. Um, uh, genius, but cruel. I think I made a friend. <laughs> you say that, Harley, and then you look over at Wintress, and she's surrounded by these things. And you see her putting them together, and you know that that creature was one of Wintress's creations. Oh! 
I see. She's surrounded by just misshapen things that are just dancing around her like 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 you imagine a fay party would be, except they're just horrible <laughs> misshapen mechanical things dancing around Wintress and 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 her dragon. Imagine like the baby doll head and spider like toy from the yes. original Toy Story movie. Yep. It's yep. shit like that. Lots so, of them. Mm-hmm. Igor will take I've been mistaken. <laughs> Igor will take this horrible creepy flower thing and he'll put it in like his lapel and just Oh, oh no, the flower there. is actually kind of cute. Like Oh, the flower's like, cute. Like, okay. Yeah, the flower is very cute and it, it's it's a okay, really we'll delicate look. representation of a flower in metal. Igor will put it in his little buttonhole on his coat. Wintress, it seems you've made some friends. I got bored, so, you know. Yes. Well, um, you. how about exploring those off-limits places from earlier? Yes. Yes. And lunch. Oh. Are you, I'm, I'm starving. Are you hungry? I mean, I'll Vanished. get to eat. I mean, I'll never say no to food. That's the spirit. Oh. Uh, Winters, uh, the little fella who gave me this, does he have a, a name? No, I just put him together like 10 minutes ago. Well, he's, he's really fast. He's good, good study, good learner. I mean, you could name him. Oh, I don't think I have the right to do that, but uh, he makes really nice flowers. He gave you a well, flower. What, what makes you not have the right to name him oh because i didn't make him myself um i technically didn't make him i just mushed him together he just you know like shove stuff together and he poof yep i've been shoving stuff together and 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 twisting wires together and and bolting stuff and it's working so Well, keep doing what you're doing. They're very autistic little guys. Mm-hmm. I'm just here to beep. <laughs> yes, there's lots of those around here. Yep, sorry, um, I uh, silenced that uh, beep. <laughs> I I believe your s- designs are horribly inefficient. <laughs> but they're fun to look at. Well, I, I think I'll call that little guy uh, Petal. Oh, interesting, yes. <laughs> uh, tell Mr. Petal that I'd like to buy another flower from him later. The Petal. I mean, you could tell him. I'm sure he understands you. Is it still around? Uh, you haven't seen it since it ran off behind one of the piles of refuse. That's what I thought. I was like, well, I'll talk to him later then. Sure. I have a feeling that Mr. Petal's going to haunt the rest of our journey here. Like, just... (laughs) He's going to be that creepy creature in the background. Like Like Gollum following Sam and Frodo (sighs) for a while. (laughs) Just just clutching the gold coin and staring at it from the shadows. When his window will be like, I feel eyes upon me, and he'll, like, turn, and you'll just see the shadow of it, like, whoop, behind something, like, disappear real quick. <laughs> or you better, you wake up in the middle of the night, and it'll be standing on your chest, Igor, and then it'll run off into the dark once you wake oh. up and see it. Oh, that's terrifying. <laughs> oh, no. That's terrifying. I don't think Petal would do that. You're right, this isn't Ravenloft. I was just, no. my mind was going, mm-hmm. like, what would mm-hmm. I do? <laughs> <laughs> We go get food. Where from? Uh, well, the main food hall place that had food earlier, I guess. I, I hope your your cultists are still cafeteria. Working. So you you make your way through. We'll see. If not, maybe there's bu- like some some scraps at the salad bar. Oh yes, we have to pass by those brains and jars, gearbox. Right. And you hear them all asking, like, uh, uh, how how are the new bodies going? Uh, do we have them yet? Oh, no, it's going to take a while. We're on a break, because, you know, we have to eat things and such. Well, well, we really have nothing to do now since your mechanical ball there that shines brightly like some sort of dancing globe uh, has taken over all our duties. So... Did I see paint in the workshop? Was there, like, different colors of paint? Yes, 
Like, there, there were some pigments and dyes and things. How about this? Well, we, we, uh, we're going to break for some lunch and stuff, you know. Mm, lunch, lunch break. You know how long it's been since we've had food? I imagine far too long. Why don't you all think of Could you of, describe um, your favorite foods for us? Like what they smell like and how how they taste? Like the textures? I, I you please? I could, yes. You know, I, I can bring the food here and... Show it to you. Oh, we can watch you eat. Yes. Oh, okay. Glorious, please. Yes, I will do that. And why don't uh, to give you something to do? You think about what colors, uh, color schemes you would like your your new mechanical bodies to have. Oh, I love chartreuse. <laughs> yeah, that gives them something to do. <laughs> yeah. Like I've always been, I've always been partial to plaid. There we go. See, keep keep brainstorming. You know, they're discussing back and forth. By the time forth. it's done, and we'll get lunch. And you know, be... <laughs> okay, so you make your way past the remains of the Grandmaster laying in his throne room <laughs> by his by remains. his throne. Yes, the, the small pieces. He's missing his most of his tail. Half of his body's ripped apart. There are no arms because you've taken those two. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty messy. Uh, there's no one in here. Um, you make it outside the Grand Hall heading down uh, the way towards uh, the dining area, which I need to see. I need to get that map. With are, the, are the cultists still there, like, waiting for the ferry? Uh, no, actually, now that um, there were a few that were trying to escape, but once Wendell, leader, <laughs> the gizzard of the Prism of Power, uh, mm-hmm. decided to overtake it and give them a new direction and uh, lots of pamphlets and, and literature. Uh, they have all they've all moved back in and keep working now, but now they're all working on equal footing. It's it's a it's a good socialist cult now. Okay. <laughs> Everyone is equal. Okay. What well, yeah, mostly. <laughs> uh, for the yeah, for the most part. I mean everyone but Wendell is equal, yeah. but you know, that's okay. Um, they, they all got in right under me, and so you know. Yes. So you head you head down to this area here, <laughs> which is the big the big cafeteria pyramid, and you see it's still operating just the same, except the menus have changed a bit. They're a little bit more fun. Oh, um, yeah, nice. there, there's yeah there's a little bit more flair to the there's more spices being used, so there's a lot more of a flavorful smell in the air. But those of you who do mm. still consume food. Where do they um, use spices? I'm questioning. I, you know, you could probably maybe ask someone that, or maybe just go with the flow. Well, I will go. I will go ask. Wendell's Where's gonna you, go with the flow. Where'd you get this new spices, Mister uh, Former Cultist? Someone sold their soul for it. I bet you. <laughs> uh, oh, it, was, it was the strangest thing. You know, early on, uh, one of the guys said he was a cook and. And he just, you know, he, he sold his face for it. I mean, and like, he has like an ever, like he has a box that is always filled with spices. So, oh, magic. Uh, yeah, we have tarragon today and saffron. And so we're doing our best with that. Um, it's never the same spice. That's kind of the weird thing. Uh, <laughs> but since he, but since he passed on uh, to the realm of the Grand Master, which now that we know is bullshit, so he just died. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, you know, we don't, we haven't really been using it much, and and well, we figure since we're under new management now, all hail prison of power. Um, I don't know what are we supposed to say in that situation. No one really gave you that part of the pamphlet. Um, you're you're the boss, right? Am I supposed to bow oh. or like do I have to lick your toes or something? Oh no, no, none of that, not at all. You sure? Yes. Oh, okay. That that's strange. Here, this is statues, perhaps a painting. <laughs> yeah, Swindle's like I'll make a list. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. I'll, I'll make strange. expanded literature. It's not I, nearly as oppressive as what you're used to, I assure you. We're used to abasing ourselves regularly, and no, this whole no. like equality thing the really is uncomfortable. The power is here to build you up, not bring you down. Uh, can you give us our faces back? Working on something. I saw mine flying around, and it was oh, really f- creepy. Now you that can I catch it, I imagine the odds would be better. They bite. <laughs> they bite. Well, maybe we'll work on some nets. You need some like face, yeah, face catching nets. Okay, okay. well, yeah, to help Get yourself some, like, though. Some, I mean, like, some of those chicken catching nets, but like, whew, just kidding. We have some, we have some stir fry today, oh, and delicious. um, 
Yeah, we have enchiladas. Uh, don't ask where the sauce came from because we're not really sure. One of the other guys just threw it together, but it's really tasty. All right, well, enjoy yourselves. Thank you. And all, all, all hail prison power. Yes. Uh, okay, great. Yeah. Is that what we say? I mean, uh, glory to the prism of power is what uh, most people have been going with. Oh, glory! Oh, okay, okay, good, 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 good. Glory. Now just join the prism of power. <laughs> yeah. Just join. Okay, cool. we'll sign up today. Yeah. <laughs> and you see him going around. It's it's glory to. Uh, get ready. One, two, three, and then everybody's like, glory to the prism of power. <laughs> You know, everybody's chanting while you guys are eating. Wendell's like, I really feel like I need to make expanded literature. He just starts pulling out some paper while he's eating and just starts making a list of things to be done uh, to in, in this ensure stability long term mm. and that he will return in, uh, in that, you know, he will reach out in 800 he, years. In 800 years. <laughs> yes, in 800 I years. I will be among you again in the future. I see. Yeah. So. <laughs> what are the rest of you doing? Igor is um is uh, Igor is eating and and Harlan, are you eating? Uh yeah. yeah so Lamont, well, what are you doing? Munching. While while the corporeal eats. Corporeal. I think from a distance he's watching Wendell like a hawk. And I and I I, I don't I really don't think he's doing much else. I mean he's in full costume. He's standing there like a <laughs> you know this complete creep, you know, nearby. He's not saying a word to anybody. And uh, I think he's watching Wendell really carefully. And I I really believe that he would be waiting for his spider sense to go off in regards to Wendell. And he's trying to, like, I think he's trying to listen to that new voice in his head, you know, this or this feeling that he's got. He's like he's really trying to figure out if innocent people are getting hurt with this whole arrangement. Uh, and is so what, what's, your, what's what's his gut feeling right now? Looks like it's going great. You <laughs> Doesn't know? it? Like, does that does that bother you, or is that yes. like a positive? Okay, okay. So it's. I, I think I think it really bothers you. It's you're it's, real uncomfortable with how good this is working out, and how positive this is for the people of this plant of this of this island. There's something in it for him, and if there's something in it for him, there's something in it for whatever he works for. Windows already told you what's in it for him. It's a trickle up power effect. <laughs> Keeps explaining that. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like a, it's it's like tributaries to a river. You have all these little rivers coming down from the mountain, and then the one at the bottom, it's a tr it's a trickle into the big river. It just imagine it going up instead of down. Right, but what is it that's going up? Is it their energy and enthusiasm? Is it their blood sacrifice? Is it their well, There's money? no blood sacrifice. That is, their we he, he strongly eternal... condemned the, the thought of cultish blood magic in the very beginning of the first campaign. Like, oh, how, how crude and disgusting blood sacrifices. Right, Ugh. no, he's not into that. Right, we've established that. And and it's it's one of those things where and it's going back to or one of the last things that Howell, you know, did was back up that there are people on a winery in a winery somewhere working and making a wage and doing whatever they're doing and everything's going great. And so I I really, you know, believe that he's eerily quiet in full costume, off to the side. He's not eating. Is the cloak billowing? The cloak is billowing. Okay, I right, have to make sure. He's off to the side with his arms folded. I don't think he's even bothered to hang from something or climb something. He's just <laughs> standing there. Wow, that's probably the most disconcerting thing for your party members is that you haven't climbed something yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're in the cafeteria. I mean, it seems like a long way to go. So, you know, <laughs> he's just sort of skulking and listening and watching Wendell. <laughs> okay. Wendell's writing stuff on paper, shoveling food down his... His mouth with the other. Twice as much food as everyone else is eating. I feel like I should Almost as much as Igor. I feel like I should say something to one of these people, but I I don't know what yet. I haven't figured I don't I don't know what yet. I think occasionally one of the faceless cultists or one of the people who were rescued that were slaves come by to you and they, they pat you on the shoulder and they go, Glory to the prison of power and they walk on. They're just like happy cultists now. 
And I like to think he like you can hear the leather of his gloves cracking. <laughs> I love that. Flexes his fist, you know, and his you know, this his suit starting to make noise and he wants to act, but he doesn't know where to point it. It's and if like, well, Lamont goes to look at what Wendell is writing furiously on a piece of paper. Um, he's used to kind of running a township to a certain extent, so he's writing like basic rules, you know, things to keep the society. Thou shalt going not here. kill unless yes. I ask you to. Thou <laughs> shalt not steal unless I point you in that direction. <laughs> unless I, <laughs> as I commanded. Uh, and um, and also like notes on how the grand hall should be repurposed um, into like a more of a communal gathering area and how they should to windows awesomeness how they should on, on the walls because there wasn't anything on the walls there was, it was just plain boring walls yeah no it was it's all metal yeah how they should engrave on the metal um the like like a family tree you know starting at the top and working the way down the sides on those who have recruited for the future of a prism of power that way it's like a like a little history log to commemorate you know that kind of thing okay well, as all this is going on, and, that, and while he requires no thanks, a statue w wouldn't he would he wouldn't be mad. <laughs> At least doubled my size, would have probably fifteen to twenty feet, or <laughs> would it kill you to you know? Yeah. Maybe a painting of a mantle. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> What's Wintress doing, Nugget? She is just eating away. Which okay. the last time they were eating, I believe she ate. Igor under the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she I, she's just chomping away. I imagine Igor is like watching you and trying to keep up still. <laughs> yeah, All that's right. it. She's just she's just hanging out. Okay. That just not no comments. Just just food time. Okay. No, she's. I think she's focused on eating non Feywild food and it's pretty it's like a it's a wild experience for her so oh yeah especially these spices these are stuff yeah you, got, you don't you don't mean you've got your own spices but this stuff that yeah, tarragon so. come on now yeah she's like i don't know what the fuck this flavor is but i love it so she's just and focused on the food <laughs> yep okay all right well you guys have a wonderful like relatively peaceful and i say that because like every five minutes Someone starts a glory to the prison of power chant uh, until Lamont stares at them with daggers in his eyes or well, daggers in his mask. Uh, they can tell he's brooding, so it's it's hard to tell through all the black, but uh, they, they stop and then it starts up again. You know, it's a constant thing. Can't pick a fight on a submarine. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can, but it's a bad idea. <laughs> You gotta be all right in there, and this is basically, you know, we're, we're in a similar situation. Yeah, no grenades in the 747, it's just not good for everyone. <laughs> I think we all eat, and then Windows like, so those are off limits areas where all the screaming was coming from earlier, they're not off limits anymore. Yes, we should put a stop to that. Yes, oh. Harlan, would you like to, to rest? You mentioned you were weary. I am quite, um, uh, drained from that, uh, our previous encounters. Um, yeah. Really? I that was like nothing. Was it nothing? Yeah. The uh, waitress was fine. She wasn't didn't get even touched. Tail murdered. Um, um, <laughs> quite the endurance. Um, I'll make note of that. It's probably the the fae in her. Her, her, <laughs> her people from the Feywild have great endurance. <laughs> All those demon parties. <laughs> <laughs> What's one bone devil when you're used to demon parties? All right. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah, so I guess uh, Harlan will uh, go find the royal room. The royal room? I don't. I don't know who, where, wherever the the, the 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 captain's quarters. I guess. Okay. Um, I don't know that there's been any indication that there's any particular place that's assigned as a captain's quarters. 
I assume that there was somewhere like that because there's like a throne area or a commander's seat. Okay. So I assumed there was some area like that. So Unless that's what... they never slept. Unless give they never me, slept. Give me an investigation check and see. Okay. Uh, with disadvantage, because you don't know your way around here and you don't know that this place exists. Oh, okay, look, I will go check the map. The you are here map? <laughs> the you are here okay. map. Okay. If, if there's not one, Wendell puts it on the list because it's a great idea. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right, so is anyone going to the Screamy house? Wendell will take Wintress and Lamont and Igor there. Okay, you guys are going to the Screamy house. That's sure. over here. Sure. And okay. and Harlan Harlan's because wandering it... around looking for the captain's Everyone's abode. so nice. Feel free to ask for directions if you need to. <laughs> All right. Um, Harlan, go ahead and, and give me a disadvantage roll. Let's see okay. what you can find. All right. <laughs> 14. Oh. Too bad it wasn't at advantage. Right. That'd been baller. I know. Yeah, it would have been like, okay, I got to create a space now. Okay. <laughs> this, this way, you just, you, you go looking and, and you follow paths and trails. You start in the main hall, which you imagine was a reception area. You know that the place where the, bra the brains are was the command center Brains. of, like, it was the flight control area of the, um, of yeah, the ship, yeah. the planer ship. Yeah, I'll go ask the brains. Hey, hey, brains. Do you know where the? I know. You... Look, look, I'm looking for your body, but I need to rest. What? Oh, um, uh, yeah. Ask one of the bars, and it's the one that's a little slower because the other ones are still talking about colors. He's yeah. like, <laughs> "What do you? What do you think about Paisley?" I'm. Uh, I suppose it's a nice color. I'm partial to reds. Well, it's more of a pattern, but. What do you what do you think about polka dots? Polka dot patterns. I just... They talk too fast for me, and I don't really understand the colors that they're. At. Wait, you had a question. Um. Yes. Is there like a, a quarters around here? Wait. Place to rest. We could. Well, yeah, most of the residents stay in the area by the cafeteria. That's where they all live. I see. All right. Yeah. I'm Thank thinking you. polka dots. Is that all you wanted to know? Yeah, polka dots would be fine. I'll uh, I'll inform the others of that. Okay. Well, the, I mean, do you want like? Okay. I feel like you're asking a question that I didn't answer properly. <laughs> Is there a place to rest closer than that? I mean, we stay in our jars. Do you want your own jar? I. It could be interesting experience, but not really. Oh, okay. I don't. I don't know how to do that though, so I'm sorry. All right. Well, th thank you. Continue with your uh, discussion. I'm gonna just walk away. Polka dots. <laughs> okay. Well, you walk away and go looking back where you came from, uh -huh. over by the cafeteria area. Uh, we'll go to the screamy place. Uh, it's not screaming now. It's actually oddly silent. Uh, you walk in, and the inside of the chamber resembles some horrid combination of a tanner's, an oh. alchemist's, and a butcher's. Oh, no. Knives and other implements <laughs> lie scattered about, razor sharp and streaked with blood and gore. Bottles and canisters of preserving chemicals are heaped up on tables and shelves, many of them leaking or spilled. Barrels unidentifiable but by their smell come off as powerful tanning acids stand open against the walls beneath rows of hanging chains a limp leather clad figure is curled against the wall beneath the chain another figure lies strapped to a table unmoving oh no they got left here and they died <laughs> hanging on the walls around the tables are a number of vibrating leather masks. The faces. Hmm. They're moving I, occasionally, like flittering. But they hang absolutely stuck. touch one. It 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 screams at you silently. But it there's make no, there's no eye hole. It's just eye holes. Oh, like it's just a, it's just a it's just a face, and it just like screams at you. But there's no sound. 
I take it off the wall. It starts to try and fly away. Can I like hold on to it? Yeah. It's okay. not very, very strong. I like roll it up and put it in my pocket. <laughs> okay. You have a, a, a half face bat. It's not Fuck quite yeah. a full face bat now. <laughs> Congratulations on your face bat, baby. Yes. <laughs> So is this what demon party Basically. aftermaths look like, Wintress? <laughs> Not particularly, but you know, there are different like styles of demon parties. This ah. could just be one that like I haven't been to yet. I see, I see. It looks like there's some faces here on the wall. Doesn't comment that she took one. It's just like, I'm just gonna not, <laughs> and I didn't see that. Um, is there like an instruction booklet anywhere? <laughs> Face ripping no. for dummies. No, damn. No, I'm sorry. There, there are no, there are no parchments or papers or anything in here, really. Damn. Put, okay. Uh, Listen, if I could bring these back as like party favors to my next demon party, <laughs> that'd be phenomenal. How many faces are on the wall? Um, probably about seventy-five. <laughs> okay. Is Ooh. there like a burlap sack anywhere? Maybe leave some faces yes. for the people who yes, wish to have some faces Yes, there are burlap sacks. Back. Yeah, of course. I don't want to take all the faces. I take no. like 30. <laughs> and stuff them into a burlap sack. That's where I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Are you with us? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I went, I went to the creepy abattoir place. <laughs> I miss it. Listen, you have to, whenever you go to a demon party, it is incredibly rude not to bring some kind of like gift or party favor. These will be perfect for my next demon party. They will have never seen anything like this. It's Wendell, perfect. Do you or Lamont either touch any of these faces? No. Okay. Um, Wendell will with his mage hand because he doesn't want to get his actual hands dirty. Okay. Well, then that won't do what I was looking for, so that's <laughs> no, fine. it's not going to try to suck my face off or adhere to my face. Nope, nope, there's a completely different reason for it. That's okay. Uh-oh. When I went all kind of poke it, peel like poke, poke it one, be like, hmm, but this will help in some people getting their faces back. Oh, someone else's face is on their own. Yeah, like I a like... choose your own face buffet. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, God. I'm sure, you, like. You had to put buffet on there. <laughs> That's even worse. <laughs> like a like a build a bear workshop with your with faces but for on faces. Your, your own face. faces. A, a golden face corral. <laughs> Silver stables. I take the thirty <laughs> best looking faces. Okay. When you plus say the, best looking, that's really, in my pocket. That's, that's you mean really like difficult. Faye Wild. Like the best esque? condition. Oh, okay. Okay. They're best all condition. in unnaturally good condition. Okay. You could take the, the funniest faces. I bet that'd be great for a demon party. Yeah, are there, like, do they have, like, so these faces, are they, like, frozen in an expression? Or do no, they, like, just, articulate? They've just been peeled off, and they <laughs> flap like bats. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I take the 30 best-looking ones, stuff them all into a burlap sack, tie it up, and then shove it into my backpack. Okay. All, all right. Wendell, what is your passive perception? Um, <laughs> not amazing. I could tell you that much. Um, my passive perception would have been 11. Okay. Uh, mine Lamont, is like do you, what, what is your passive perception? I don't have it in front of me right um, now. I don't think it's much better than mine. I shuffled it, uh, actually, because I... Uh, passive perception, 16. Ooh. Oh, okay. All right. You know something strange about the corpse along the wall. Uh-oh. Okay. And I, I like to think that I'm watching... Oh, wait, it's not really a corpse. It's a leather-clad figure. Is it, is it standing? No, it's just curled up against the wall. Okay. I'd like to think I'm looking at Wintress, and it's one of the few times that Lamont has been grossed out. It hasn't happened very often, but mm. it, I think he's she's sufficiently cr creeped him out. <laughs> And then I, I see the figure, and I, 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 I approach. Okay, you approach. It does not move. I loom over it. Uh, it is loomed. Can I do my, uh, my? Are you going to intimidate? Detail? 
Oh, no. eye for detail? Okay. I think that's a combat thing. Oh, no, I can but, spot uh, a hidden creature or object or make an investigation check to uncover or decipher clues. Okay, I'll let you make an investigation check of the um, leather-clad body here. Look like the gimp? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Here we go. There, there's a bit of a... Oh! Ooh. You lean over. You're looming with all of your might. You're exuding a natural aura of fear. Damn. Like, you're, you're billowing... Cloak is like full spawn mode right now. It literally is like lit- like it's animated behind you and just stripping out little pieces and it looks alive. <laughs> and you get real close and you're like, ah, shit, that's a, that's a leather golem armor. That's just a set of armor. Mm. I kick it with my toe. It's, it's just magical armor. Just magic armor? Mm-hmm. It's, it's leather armor. Really need a magic sword. Because I couldn't beat the last guy. I didn't have any magic stuff. Like, God damn now it. you have magic swords. It, have it's magic. a set. It's a set. Of, yeah, you got both. You got, got both, both the, the swords. The, the magic swords. Oh, I took his the, swords. Yeah. Yeah, you took the really cool swords that do fun things that I didn't get to use against you guys. That's right. That's right. Sweet. Well, you look at this thing on the ground. Yeah, you've got the magic swords, and then you got the magic bracelets that let you stab things, anything you can see in any range. If you can see it, you can stab it. Ah, that's right. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, you're like super ranged stabbiness now. Oh, that's you awesome. can sneak attack from a thousand feet. You can see the guy. All right. Go on. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great thing to have. Let it's, me tell it's a, you. It's absolutely overpowered and ridiculous, and I'm glad I gave it to you. <laughs> but what you see before you is a leather golem that has been hollowed out and turned into a suit of armor. Cool. It is definitely. Magical. Cool. Great body. Check it out. We should make a fun friend. What is it? You guys see it now? Yeah, it's you see it looks like it's a suit of armor. And and Wendell, you'll recognize the arcane sort of design of this. It was once a leather golem uh, that has been killed, hollowed out, and turned into a suit of armor. Uh, 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 well, like, is, it, is it your style, Lamont? Well, I don't know. It, Eagle doesn't wear armor. Is it black? It's kind of like a, a dark brown. What about you, Wintress? You think you fancy that suit of armor? I think. Um. Maybe you should no, try it I've on? Got, I've got my tattoo. I'm fine. I'm sorry, you what? <laughs> My tattoo! And she, she like, pushes up the sleeve of her shirt, and she has this... Hold on, let me get the correct description. Awesome. Oh! Uh, one second. Sorry. Should have had my D&D Beyond up. <laughs> uh, inventory. Uh, da 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 Oh, okay. It doesn't really. Okay. So you see like on her entire right arm from the wrist up to the shoulder, there is this intricate, like ice blue swirling, like shield kind of tattoo that glows very slightly, slightly, and it moves. It looks like liquid metal. Um, she's like, yeah, this protects me. Interesting. You have a magic tattoo? Yeah. That is pretty cool. I'm not going yeah. to lie. Yeah, I got it when I was like, I don't know. How old was I? Hold on, let me check her age real quick. I wrote it down. God, when I was like seven. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> After I took my first. I got it when first. I was like 350. I, you know. Oh, that. Yeah. yeah, I think it's like 130 is when she got it, when she was a kid. Okay. She's like really old. <laughs> in material realm years. Yeah, I got it in like my 120s, you know. Like like you do. Yeah. Those rebellious years. <laughs> Those rebellious yeah, like, 120s. 
Like my mom really didn't want me to get it because like she said it would ruin my image at court. But like I convinced her, I was like, look, you know, like it fits my whole theme, like the winter stuff, like it fits with the core. I, and she, the she aesthetic is that, there. I, I see it. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I got it in my one twenty. I understand. You know, my mother was also years. very disapproving of choices I made. Yeah. Mothers. <laughs> But yeah, I don't need any armor. This is fine. This is plenty. Really? That's all there really is to the to the room. It's a it's a torture room. The guy on the table seems to have died while his face is being removed. But is his face is his face still attached to his body? No, you you don't see his face. Damn. Okay. Or you might have his face. You don't. You have to play puzzle pieces to see which one fits. Winters yeah. doesn't have the attention span for that. <laughs> Wendell will just make a make a note on how to contact, you know, just in case there's a reminder. Be like, for those wishing for face replacement, uh, please select one from the wall and contact your benefactor. <laughs> <laughs> sure you can work something out. <laughs> I'll post a note. Think. Fix it to the wall. <laughs> All right, back to Harlan. Harlan, you've made it all the way back to the dormitory areas of the Monastery of the Distressed Body, now uh, under the Prism of Power. Uh, brought to you by the Prism of Power, I think is now the title. Yeah, brought um, to you. <laughs> wow, that's sliding pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's already, it's already over everything. It's like, you know... Cafeteria, monster the, uh, the distressed body it's, it's cafeteria, brought to you everywhere. by the Prism of Power. Because I do have a logo for the Prism of Power. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. I've seen it. I have a logo for all the schemes. So, so you make it back and you start digging through the dormitory areas, and you find that these are ramshackle locations made by made recently by the people who live here. This is where they live. Mm -hmm. Huh. Let's see here. Are there any rooms that are not taken? Sure. Uh, right. You go into a room. Uh, there's no one in there. It's it's basically a, a small cell, sort of. Uh, maybe about 10 feet across. It's got two sets of bunk beds on either side and a small table in the middle with a chair. All right. This will do, I suppose. Uh, he'll find a place to lay down. Okay, you find a bed that is basically a, a mattress of straw. Um, there is a smell of stale sweat in the air. Okay. Well, we'll get like a like a boys' locker room. Oh man, that's that's great. Oh, oh crap! I don't have prestidigitation. Uh oh. Well, you know what? I'll just live through it. I've, I've it's not it's not overpowering. It's just an underlying scent that that you notice because you're lying there for any period of time. I've lived with goblins. <laughs> mm. Yeah, this this is perfume compared to that. Oh, I think I'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. You, you're able to get at, at least a short rest if you wish, a long rest if you have to. I would prefer to start on a long rest. Okay, so you're gone for eight hours. I... I mean, I could be woken up if something mm -hmm. terrible is happening, but yes. If they know where to look for you. Well, I think... Wendell, Wendell, can, Wendell can just message him directly. Oh, that's true. All right, so that's not a problem. Darn it. And <laughs> I'm, ki I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's there's nothing left here for you to fight, so... Uh, okay, well, let's, we'll see about that. I mean, if you'd like me to create something horrible and horrendous for you to fight, I can find something. I mean, like the brother of Watsit in a body that's a mechanic, like a, a mechanosaur that wants to, you know. I'll just start challenging all this. Like, fight. you! Fight now! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Back at the uh, Leather Face Museum, um, what are you guys doing? Wasn't there another building that was off limits besides the Leather Face Museum? Um, uh, I don't remember. You guys weren't really supposed to spend much time in the generation <laughs> that's room, right. but that's where you found. Um, that's mm -hmm. where you you gave your great speech, uh, and and wooed the cultists before true. the 
fell out of the sky. Yes. Wasn't there, didn't we, we tried to go like back over here, but yeah, we got let stopped. Us? Yeah, I remember we got uh, stopped let me here. See. We got stopped here. Uh, let me double check and see what but, that place is. Remember, right. we were more on the left side and it was fine. We were on the right side. I just had like, to bring up the map so I can see if it has. Okay, that was, you would just stop. You go back if you'd like. Um, I see that's the little island, okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's in the back, a mm -hmm. little further along. Okay, <laughs> you make your way. Um, you head back towards the entrance to the main galley, a uh, gallery, uh, where you fought the Grand Master, and you head to the right along a path that winds up a slight incline to a cliff face where there are two uh, pyramidal be uh, buildings. Um, there are some faceless monks. Uh, wandering around here, they all bow very deeply and abase themselves to Wendell as he walks up, um, not knowing, not not having been down to the cafeteria and learning that that kind of stuff is not really approved of. What do you do? Well, left or right? Why don't you pick Wintress? Knowing that Wintress is probably is just always gonna right. Can't head for one anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You head into the building. And it seems to be a dormitory for the faceless monks themselves. Ah. It is nicer accommodations. Um, oh. It's the cells are single bed cells that are about fifteen by fifteen squares. Um, they have a table, um, looks like a bed, and a little receiving area inside each one. Is there anybody in them right now? Um, there's one or two people, but as soon as they see Wendell, they base themselves on the ground and don't say a word. Cool. I'm gonna start. Is there, are there like trunks anywhere? Do they have like? Yeah, there are some belongings? trunks. Sure. I'm gonna start going through them. Okay, you go through some. Uh, give me an investigation. I totally don't see any of this. This is a valuables inspection. Natural twenty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, there to wasn't be fair, gonna be anything Some of these people there. probably left. <laughs> um. You find inside this particular uh, chest that you're looking at, um, it's a, in an abandoned room. Looks like there's no one in here or has been in here uh, today at least. Uh, you find a hidden compartment in the bottom of Ooh. the chest. Inside is a, uh, a leather scroll case and a small leather pouch that feels like there are coins inside and one small stoppered vial that is red. That is red? Yes, it has red liquid inside it. Bad cultists. Is there anything in the leather scroll case? There yes, anything? there is a scroll inside. Okay. I just kind of like pop open the lid, see that there's a scroll, close it, and stuff it all into my back. Okay. <laughs> Winter there you go. Klepto. The other, the other chests. Nobody which stopped me. So. You literally, you literally <laughs> look at some, and there are guys lying right beside their chest, the basing the cells for window, and you're digging through their stuff. As I'm going through this, absolutely, 100%. and they don't, they don't say a word. <laughs> you don't find anything. There's no more hidden compartments. There's basically like changes of clothing, um, stacks of parchment with like like journals and things like that. Nothing spectacular. Okay. There, I'm sorry, you said there's like a journal, like somebody's diary. Some of them are journals, yes. Any like diary I find, I take. <laughs> okay, you find three. Three? They don't, I, okay. They don't need their collections of their life before they're in the prison of power <laughs> no, now. Exactly. <laughs> it's all mine now. <laughs> of course. Winters has found herself some reading material. I hope one of them is just fanfic. <laughs> but like fanfic of life at the monastery. <laughs> Like, like the um the bone what's devil. it the bone yeah. devil and like a, a high priest or something. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, yes. it's it's a romantic fanfic, one of them, of, of the Grand Master <laughs> falling for one of the faceless monks. Oh. Yes. Yeah, it's it's really it's really steamy. It's you know <laughs> literally and you can look at the guy right next to it, you know who wrote it, you know exactly which one. Nice. Okay. Yeah. The tall think... faceless elven man. It would be. I take, I take it. I just, he doesn't stop me. I take it. Nope. <laughs> okay. Jesus Christ. Mighty fine rooms you have here. Keep up the good work. Lynn. None of them even move. They just keep their foreheads on the ground. <sighs> They'll keep it out. 
Wendell, the, the word will pass along soon enough. It's... He will, he will make himself weary telling every single person of the things. He's, he's written it down. He's going to make it put the small compendium in the main hall. It just takes fine. time for these kind of things to propagate. It, it does. It does. It's like planting seeds in a garden. You have to wait for well, them to sprout and bloom. Igor, you've been following along behind your master and the others, watching them dig through things, seeing horrible stuff like the, float, the, the face ripping house and whatnot. It's the most horrible. <laughs> Absolutely horrible. But while you're doing this, after about an hour to two hours, you feel a calm wash over you. And you suddenly feel like you're much more lucky. Hmm. Igor gets a little bit of a hop in his step if he's stepping. Feels you know, pretty good. Yeah, I, I put it in in the um uh in in the list there, but your your delicate metallic flower is a flower of luck. Okay. It gives you Aww. the opportunity to re-roll a natural one three times a day. Oh and recharges I on a long rest. Halfling flower. Yeah, but it's just a flower. That one three times a day. Ooh. Yeah, you have to take you have to take the new like when you were if, if each time each day you can do mm -hmm. it three times and and it, you have to take the new roll, but it gives you an opportunity to re-roll a natural one. Okay, I'm typing that down right now. Dang, that is a lucky little flower. It is a nice little lucky flower. If from petal, <laughs> from petal. Love that name, by the way. That's a, that's. <laughs> I, I I need art of petal now. <laughs> <laughs> petal robot. All right, well, oh, Igor. Uh, yeah, the creepy, yeah, uh, creepy robot doll. All right, Igor has a little hop in his step, then, and he kind of just adjusts his flower for no apparent reason. It's subconsciously. It looks really good on your <laughs> butler tux. Oh, he's very proud of his petal flower. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are you doing now? What time Everyone? of day is it? Harlan is sleeping. As, as I know we've sorry. been here a while. It's a little overcast. It's kind of hard to tell what time of day it is. Because I know we got here at lunchtime, and then we wandered around for a while, and then fought the Grandmaster, and then fucked around for a bit longer, and then went around. So I, we had dinner, so I imagine it's probably getting close to sunset. No. I was ask, so when I, no. It doesn't look that way. Oh. When I stepped away. Oh, we, we, are, we are back in the past. Maybe weather's really fucking weird, or times of day is weird. <laughs> Or the when monastery is in a weird bubble. When I stepped away, what all did you guys do? Just chill and run around the um, house, get food? Wintress took 30 faces, stuffed them in a bag, and put them in her backpack. Well, they went to go eat. Okay. Uh, they they went one to in eat. My pocket. That's right. And, they, and, and you had a stare down uh, food munching contest because last time you had a food contest, you lost to Wintress. This time you kind of just watched her and tried to keep up with eating with her. No, no. Um, then you went to the to the leather shop where the screaming was before, and there you found uh, seventy five torn like faces hanging on walls. Um, that where she body. got thirty one. <laughs> yes, well, she, yeah, Winters took thirty one of them, um, and and so there's only forty something faces on the walls now. Um, Window put a post-it note up if anyone wants to try and reclaim their face, and if they can find it, to please see the management or speak with the patron. <laughs> yes. Um, Okay. And, <laughs> Please consult and the then benefactor. They, then they went north and found a um, found the housing for the faceless monks, which is different from the housing from sort of like the slaves and the lower level monk people, mm -hmm. where what, Harlan is currently sleeping. What What do we want to do then? It's <laughs> an excellent well, question. Uh, excuse me, I'll flag down in a in denizen. Yeah. Okay. What sort of denizen? Do you want just a normal person? Do you want a faceless monk? What do you want? Doesn't matter. Someone who might know what time it is. Probably more okay. of a faceless where, monk. Where, where you're at right now, one of the faceless monks is trying to walk past you without looking because he knows as soon as he looks, he has to abase himself. And then you call to him and he falls right to the ground and puts his head on the ground. Oh, no. You Please stand up. You, you, I am unworthy. Everyone is worthy in the prison I am unworthy. Power. <laughs> and I will put my hand on his shoulder. You see him like literally pull away and like start shaking. No, 
everyone, every single person in the prism of power has worth. E even the slaves? Everyone has worth in the prism of power. Now, how soon you get in the prism of power depends, you know, you might have more worth than others, but everyone does have worth. <laughs> the trickle of you, power You see him look up... He looks up at you and you see that horrible, like, ripped face visage. Yes, I just and... smile beneficially at him, help him up. He, and... he takes your hand and rises. Could you perhaps tell me what time of day it is? Oh. Oh! <laughs> you... That's right, you, you wouldn't know. Um, it is day. It is day. Yes. Does night? When does night happen? How long till night? I. It. It's really hard to say. Really. It just kind of comes. See. And it's never consistent. We tried timing it like with drops of water. We tried doing mm -hmm. different sundial things, which don't really work because it never moves. That makes sense. How do you keep a schedule then? I'm guessing the drops of water timers? Uh, we, we tried lots of different things. Now we just kind of like tell people to do things when we want to do it. And it's really not. A, but I mean, I don't guess we're supposed to do that anymore because we're all equal and all is all is one in the prism of power. You know, the prism of power. He's looking at you like. It's like, yes, yes. Glory to the prism of power and right, right. the drops of water thing. Do you have a, 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 a turns dial? A um, timer? Sand timer? No, uh, we'd use those two, but it didn't really... Yeah, no, yeah. It, but it went up? That is bizarre. Yeah, and it, and it wasn't consistent. And I'm... Look, this place is weird. This place we is indeed We just thought it was the Grand strange. Master messing with us, but now that he's no, done more and... it is the place. Oh, okay. That's 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 cool. Um, yes. Can you fix it? I oh, will... great and powerful leader of the Prison of Power? I will work on something that schedules may be made. Basically, Wendell's like, I'm gonna just be like, yo, Gearbox, what time is it? Because <laughs> Gearbox, being a creature of Mechanus, would always know what time it is. Uh, can I can I go now? I mean, yes, go great yes, and powerful course. one. No, please. Hail to the prism of power and carry on all with your day. It, thank you for yes. answering my questions. Um, thank you, sir, ma'am, your your greatness. And he shuffles off. That's bad. And then, so it seems that we don't have a good indicator of time here, uh, Lamont. I'm not sure if you caught all that. Because <laughs> I assume Lamont's still watching Wendell really intensely whenever Wendell's doing something. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm I believe he was a little caught off guard by the leather face thing. Yeah. Yeah, there was that. What's up? Time here is wonky. They, they tried the, the hourglass timers and it, the sand went up. The, the day-night cycle is all... ...becucked, as some people might say. Oh. So, I suppose we should rest if, well, those of us who sleep should. Do you sleep, Wintress? Uh, yeah. You know, when I can. When you. When you can? Is yeah. it something that inhibits your sleep? I mean. Nothing, like, magical or anything, just like, you know, I don't sleep well. Do you suffer from exhaustion? Uh, maybe? I don't know. I don't feel exhausted. I mean, I feel exhausted, but I don't, like, feel exhausted, you know? Have you slept outside of the Feywild? No. Today's my first day in the mortal realm, so... Oh. Well. You're welcome. Yep, sleep here is pretty great. A lot of people, a lot of people like it. Igor okay. loves it. So perhaps we should uh, take a nap soon, so that we are all. Uh, you can have more energy to make more friends. Yeah. 
Yeah, sleep sounds good. I mean, like, I sleep every couple of years, so. Yes, that is interesting. When was the last time you slept? Uh, I don't know, like, two or three years ago? So maybe you'll find that uh, sleep here on the mortar room is different. You should, you should, we should find out, you know, yeah. science. Right. I don't know what science is, but I'm glad to help them figure stuff out. Science is wonderful. Harlan loves science. Is bueno. science a person? Well, no. Yes. Harlan in love with them? <clears throat> if, I, if I may. Yes. <laughs> What's with all the sleeping? You don't need to sleep. I don't need to sleep. Wait. She doesn't have to take a nap for another year or two. Possibly. Why don't we clean this sucker out? And land this plane. Harlan needs to sleep. Why does Harlan need to sleep? Harlan's always needed to sleep. Harlan is quite tired. After everything that's happened today, you know. After a prolonged squawk? What? What is what? He's um, just well, we did. Sleeping. We landed our traveling vehicle. We walked through a bunch of mines, a tunnels. Yeah. We... Really uh, Walked through with stone, we met Jem, and then we solved a Sphinx's riddle, and then we came up here and we fought a... It's been a while since Harlan has slept. I try to be eager too. Uh, Not a young wizard anymore. He's, and when you think about it, it's been probably about 36. It feels like it's been like 36, going on almost 40 hours since yeah. the boat landed. Mm hmm. Harlan is quite tired. I'm sure Igor is. Tired as well, and Wintress hasn't not yet snapped on the mortal plane. It could be a fun experience for her. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not All going right. to sleep as well. I'm going to be writing things. And, and eating in front of those brains in jars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted to see it, so. <laughs> I, I, I pulled some I mean, that's, that's ASMR the fans. That's a thing that some people like. I mean... Food is, you know. I, I, I saved some enchiladas uh, so that I can describe everything about it to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. whatever While floats you boat. Describing vote. enchiladas and everyone else is asleep, I'm going to take a turn around the town or the cat yes, floating. Please, just let me know if you need anything. I'll do that. And I, and I think with a flourish, <laughs> I turn. And uh, and exit whatever room we're in. Literally, as he leaves, the like you see the cloak like elongate and stretch out, and mm -hmm. it's following behind him. And then it kind of stops, flips up, and goes boop boop, and then it's gone. <laughs> it's taking oh, on a life of its own. Yeah, it's, Wintress absolutely waves back. Thank you for that. All right, Wintress, uh, <laughs> would you and Eagle, you would win Eagle, Wintress and Eagle, would you like to sleep in beds or uh, try out the camping gear? That our friend Reagan procured. You mean I'd get the option to either sleep in the bed or on the floor? No, no, no. He packed like hammocks and things. Yeah, you've it's only looked at receipt. this. It's it's really interesting. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but there's some instructions that go along with it. Oh, uh, whatever you'd like me to sleep in, Master. Wintress, would you like a <laughs> hammock or a bed? What's a hammock? All right, we'll do the hammocks. <laughs> okay. Igor, well, I'll, re I'll read you the instructions. <laughs> oh, okay. Set up the hammocks. Uh, through the process of placing the instructions, you find out the, these particular tent hammock con concoctions that Reagan has procured for you is it? It you see that like. On the logo is like a big G for Gilmore's. You know, this is, yes. you feel the magic from it. And with the placement, the instructions are like place in a wide open area. Make sure the ground is flat. Stand okay. back 10 feet before activating. Say the magic word. Gilmore's is great. And then <laughs> once it all happens, it's just poof, this like two story canvas like nice. home is built. It's not quite as good as Garmel's instant place that we had no, in no. the previous game but for for roughing it this is glamping at its best yes oh reagan i appreciate you yes. you have tiny <laughs> pop-up homes in your pockets 
Yes. I want one. Well, we can talk about that. How about you see what it's like sleeping in there? Yeah. Igor, you and Winters get a, a nice evening sleep, and I will, um... Like on the bottom floor, there's, like, literally, a, a, like, a, a camp, uh, a camp stove and cooking area. There is a table inside. There's chairs for enough of everyone. There's literally a little note from Reagan saying, I hope everything is going well. Um, and then, like, there's uh, there's a ladder that goes up the second floor. I love that floor. this means Reagan set up the tent, wrote the note, left it there, and then put it back, it, mm -hmm. back there. Right? Yep. He had to make sure it was correct. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then and then there's 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 hammocks for everybody upstairs, and there is actually a feather bed for Wendell. <gasps> so these are hammocks. They're like a hug, like a bed that gives you a hug. That sounds like a great time. And they and they can oh. swing a little bit. I Elviron's gonna Ooh. sleep there. Igor sold for and swinging. Elviron gets up and goes and like does like the dog, like scratch and then circle around like four or five times before settling into the feather bed. That's fine. Wendell doesn't sleep. He just <laughs> needs a desk. <laughs> but the thought was appreciated. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then Winters will take whatever hammock is closest to the feather bed. It's probably the hammock that was meant for Igor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then Igor. All right. Take a hammock, and I will. Uh, I will be in the main chamber. You can find me after a nice long sleep. Okay. Right. We do oh, eat so much ladders in front like, of brains in jars now. <laughs> even as as Wendell is talking, Wintress straight up just conks out, like, just dead asleep. <laughs> <laughs> because this is her first time in the mortal plane. Time is fucky. Like, she is exhausted, but she doesn't feel exhausted, you know? So she just conks yeah. right out. And time is different on the mortal realm, so she yeah. might be really, really tired. Yeah. Like, a day in the mortal realm is, like, a hundred years in the Feywild. I don't fucking know, so... Depending on the She's day. She's exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> Comes and goes. Yeah, it, it depends. So... Yeah. All right. So we have Wintress, Harlan, Igor, and Eviron all sleeping in different mm -hmm. places. Uh, Wendell, you're heading to the brains and jars. Yes, I'm going to eat some enchiladas in front of them and describe every aspect about Live said enchiladas. Live ASMR for the brains and jars. And then I'm going to work on some literature for these monks because I have time to write and that's what I do when I don't okay. sleep. Okay. So if that goes on, I don't think we need to describe viscerally the ASMR of eating enchiladas for brains in jars. I don't know if that necessarily needs to be created for this I mean, lifetime. And yet, and yet, <laughs> and yet, I will We're find here. a chance. Yeah, you know, I'd rather speak with Lamont about what he's doing in this place that has been turned over to the control and love and care of Wendell and his prism of power. Well, <clears throat> well, thank you. I would. Uh, I I'm thinking about when the leading an enchilada, but I, let's let's enjoy the story. It's, you're the DM, so it's your your true. The point is, uh, thank, thank you. He he takes the turn around the the complex here, right? We assess that all the kids are asleep in their beds, and some of these random weirdos are still shuffling about. Now, uh, Wendell's you know, um, weird, you know, uh, buddies. And I make my way to the, the, the workshop, the, uh, the artificers. Okay. Uh, the, the little island that, that holds the wind, Wintress's misfit toys and the, the demon now. brain in a jar. Oh no, we're going there trip. You're, you're asleep. Go back, go, go to bed. Go, go back okay. to bed. You're dreaming. I'll it's, guide it's you simple. on the ankle on your way out. <laughs> just, just um, doesn't last that long. And no, it's like a minute. I don't know. Yeah. It depends on how impulsive he is. <laughs> it, take, it takes at least a minute to get across uh, the floating tensor discs. Oh. Uh, you make it to the island of Wintress's misfit toys and, and the devil brain in a jar. Okay. And you return. This is a this is I a, knew I liked you. I completely ignore this 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 <laughs> voice in the jar. I just don't speak to it. I'll keep and, talking. And in the room, 
in your brain. This is a classic the whole time suiting up scene. Okay, we're gonna okay. check all the gear. We're we're checking the gloves. We're checking That's the armor. Wild. We're checking these new swords. We got bracers. Okay. They got to fit around the gloves. He he. I I like to think he basically. I think he's. You know, this is a great opportunity for Lamont to get naked. <laughs> um, and I, I, I don't see a reason why not. And so we find he clears a table and uh, takes all his shit off and lays it all flat and, you know, accounts for it. And he's he's down with his new bracers. He's, he's, and this is we're going to have another evolution of uh, of Lamont kidding himself out. And when he puts everything back on. I like to think, you know, the, the the edges are a little sharper. I think he's got some things on his shoulders, like fucking claws on his shoulders or some shit. And the whole thing just kind of gets a little creepier and a little more aggressive. And, uh, and then I want to turn and what's so funny? What, what, you're turning pink in front of me. Uh, I'm not checking chat. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Well, the, this is my favorite part. I'm doing the. I rolled a D100, and on the particular table that you that you just pushed everything off of, you heard things break and crash to the ground. You actually destroyed one of the one of the easy ways home that I had put in front of you, um, so that way you could complete this entire process a lot easier because you don't know if the ship is going to be there when you get back. So that well, I rolled a D100 and got it. I'm looking at my shot gloves right now. And so right. if that's the case, then while all this is going on, you're like, you hear in your brain, it's like, hmm, you know, I could use your body. That's, that's, a, I, I mean, you've got your well, your well put out there. I could, I could definitely, I mean, would you like to trade places? I could put your brain in here and I could take that body. I don't say a word to this thing. I look at your equipment. It's, it's glorious. You really are quite skilled. I mean, Bromsandi has nothing on. I'm sure you could build me a body in no time. Or just give me that one. I want to decide who lives and who dies. Well, I mean, you just destroyed the cure for cancer on that table that Tom Sandy was working on. You, you just decided a whole bunch of people in the future will die. So, I mean, you feel better now? I don't believe a word you're saying. I mean, look at, look at, look at the refuse. Those were working prototypes on that table you just cleared off, so you could admire yourself and literally strip in front of the person who doesn't have a body and show off yours. <laughs> Asshole. I mean, I thought I was the demon did the torture. That was pretty well done. I mean, I would give you an A plus. So close to killing this thing. I mean, is there like a reason I like like this because if we kill it, you can just come through the portal for hell in a fresh new bone devil body right, and try to murder us. Kill it because yeah. it's like stuck there. And that's also the you know that his brain is like the catalyst that is also keeping that. this island floating. Part of the trap. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so he says cure for cancer and that I just smashed it. And first off, I don't believe him. And second off, That's fine. I've got the whole place to myself for a while. I want. I just want to do a big fat investigation check on this whole thing. Okay. And, and try to get a sense of, okay, fine. He was trying to cure cancer on this table. What was he doing over there? And he takes a, a nice long hour or two to just check this place Okay, out. if you're going to take that long and you're going to take your time with your experience, I will give you advantage on your investigation check. 17. Okay. Um, you notice that there are notes and components left around in this entire room. Many of them have potential value if you understand what they are. There are instructions and raw materials for creating artificial bodies for the brains in the jars. There are pieces and parts that could be used to create a flying craft. Uh, there are planar equipment here that could be used to rip holes in the fabric of space and time to move you around. Um, there are what looks to be the beginning of a, a personal ambulatory craft capable of crawling up and down mountain slopes uh, and possibly flying. There are different types of ever-burning lights. There are uh, momentum traps that you would imagine that if you had one uh, on you or around you, like on a device, 
anything fired at you at a high rate of speed would be stopped in its track and drop harmless to the ground so you could not be hit by projectiles. You see some of the most creative artificery that you have ever been associated with lying as refuse strewn about this building. Not to mention the very equipment keeping this thing floating. Mm. Also, the cure for cancer that's broken. Like, literally, you see the notes, what was going to go on, and that he felt like he had succeeded, and it just needed to age a bit before before trying, and it looked like it it had reached that point. The efficacy had been 100% at that point. All right. I appreciate that you understand the deeper more moral implications of what I did on that table, but Lamont is is just not there right now. I I, I just don't think that's where his I don't think I don't think what have I done is in his head on this one. Not uh, yet. It's gonna be like three months from now when he's gonna be encountering someone who's dying <laughs> from cancer and he's gonna be like, If only I had to smashed that. No. I, there needs to be like a sign on it or something, you know. <laughs> it should, it should have like, by the way, cure for cancer. Do not touch, you know. Like the, you look at it, and and in three different languages, there's a little placard that was next to it that says <laughs> "cure for cancer." Do not touch. We weren't in. It was the wrong state of mind. I mean, it happens. Uh, and I'm. I want to check out the ever la- the light thing and the climbing craft. And I want to check out the the motion bullet stopper yeah. thing, but I think the one he's most drawn to. None is- of these are completed. You can see that they were in the process of being built before it looks like Bramsandi had to leave quickly, and you know that he was basically kicked out of this this workshop by the Bone Devil. And the dimensional hole ripper. Right. It is incomplete. It, it is also incomplete. All of these items are incomplete. You believe that there's enough equipment in here that with the proper tools and maybe the information inside Brom Sandy's journal, along with the notes and things on the tables, that with the correct time and luck, you might be able to make these work yourself. Okay. He's dead? Who? Brom Sandy? You don't know that. Ooh, we're looking for him. He might be alive in the city that we're looking for. Or he could be in the middle of putting a journal? vampire in the box when we get yes, there. Yes, literally. Okay, and where's the journal? On the pedestal. That's the thing that you could bypass or that's die horribly if you mess up. Where, okay, all right, yeah. got it. Okay, I gather up all the papers. Okay. And attempt to, to bind them in some fashion, either with a length of string or, or some sure. in a wire or some sort of a thing. Now, uh, you're looking at at least two, two, three hours now you've been doing this. Yeah. And, and so the idea is that we're going to land this thing. Land what thing? This, this, this floating rock. I, I, okay. Are we, are we gonna, like, like that's I, the next question. I don't is believe Lamont that's been discussed. Fuzzy on what the battle plan was here is like, are we gonna ditch this thing or are we gonna. No, you wanted it as a workshop for the future coming. That's what I was like saying. Like 800 like years after we maybe build some bodies for some brains. I'm saying, so he's starting to figure out where he's gonna put, you know, you know, his, the coffee maker, you know, even though he doesn't drink it anymore. <laughs> it's just be nice to have one, you know. Uh, okay. Because Harlan wanted to share it with you, I think. You two wanted both yeah, to workshop. That's right. Okay. This is coming back to me. So this is going to be the new digs if we can, if this whole thing works out. So, so yeah, I mean, he's, he's, as much as Lamont can quietly have a huge freak out like a kid at the Toys R Us Super Toy Run, uh, that's, that's basically what's happening. But you'd never know because he's the very picture of, Okay, yeah, you you have the time. If you need to do any repairs on your particular equipment, it's very easy to make those repairs. I won't even cause a check because, you know, it, you have the equipment and the tools here more than you probably had since you were an artificer yourself in another place in time. Okay, well, maybe we'll talk about what I could do in here to my armor, maybe. in the- Well, you may not have enough time because... Right, yeah, because you all, you're, everybody else is resting, and you're about they're about halfway through the rest now, and so you probably only have four hours to really get something done. And that's not really enough to make any major changes, but repairs are possible. Mm-hmm. But 
while you're in there doing that, Wendell is munching loudly on enchiladas and describing yes. all of his tastes. Yes. And- Imagine by this point, by four hours later, he's finished with the enchiladas. And right, describing like, oh, everything he God, about thank them. you so much. That was the, literally the, the greatest thing we've experienced been placed inside these horrible jaws. Well, while your um, bodies are still work in progress, I, any meal I consume, I would be happy to do so in front of you. Hey, um, what do you think about polka dots? Oh, I think you'd look smashing in polka dots. Yeah. Oh, God, would you please stop with the polka He was bad enough when he was thinking of paisley. Now he's on polka dots, and it's all he can think about. Polka dots are a little more classy than Paisley. He's a one-track jaw. Well, yes. Um, if you, is, is, is anything interesting in the menu tomorrow? If you're still here, you know, maybe a breakfast. I, oh, I would love to hear about eggs and bacon if possible. I, don't, I, I don't will know see what's on the possible. menu. Uh, good, good. I. I'd hate to not know what it's like, again, to have the eggs and bacon. But thank you. I'm sorry. I could go on forever. I'm just a brain in a jar. You understand. Oh, no, so. you're fine. Um, I, I've, I've taken the notes as well of the colors you all requested, and I will... Um, how, how are we doing on the whole bodies for brains thing? Oh, you know, it's a work in progress. My two companions are very... Uh, well... The, you know, one of your companions is over there right now. Yes, I imagine he's doing some of the, the some some work on it as well. He doesn't need to sleep as I do, uh, just as I do not need to sleep. But the other companion, Harlan, you know, the really smart one, he uh, he requires rest every so often. Yes, he did seem like he had quite a brain himself. That he does. Do you know if he'd like to be in a jar? I'm sure his brain would really like to get out. Or walk from time to time. I, you know, perhaps when he enters his old age and his own body cannot carry him. Oh, that's a great idea. Life extension through bottled brains. Hmm, you really have something there. Wendell's like, yes. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going okay. to go, uh, oh, uh, and, and also I, I imagine he would have tried to work out, uh, Gearbox, what time is it? I'm Gearbox. Gearbox. You're doing a great job running the ship. I am Gearbox. Say I'm Gearbox. Can Gearbox display the time? Oh, Gearbox would have difficulty displaying Gearbox's time because Gearbox doesn't know what the time here is because the time here is not right. Gearbox I've is sorry. I noticed that. Can Gearbox set a timer? Oh, Gearbox can set many timers. Wonderful. That are independent from the general time itself so that they can just go off. Yes. Know. What would you like for Gearbox oh. to time? Wendell will be like, could you time every every hour? You know, like a clock. Like one chime for one hour, two chimes for two hours. Oh, and Gearbox then, can do that. And when it hits 12... Start again at what you know, reset back to one. Oh, oh, you'd like to do a tw- gearbox can do a 24 hour clock, uh, but of rotating 12s. Would you not prefer one 24, to 24? 24, if that is what gearbox prefers, is just great. One to 24. I uh, gearbox is fine either way. Gearbox only wants to make his friends happy and, and thank them for giving him such. A useful purpose in its life. Yes, well, there's the the people. I I took the list that you gave of necessary repairs and how to how to fix them, and they will be working on them. But they need to. Well, you know how your friends need to sleep and rest and eat sometimes. It's difficult to do these things without timers. But your timers yes. will be very helpful. Gearbox noticed how inefficient his friends were. Yes, they will be more efficient with this twenty-four hour timer. <laughs> Should I chime now at the beginning of the timer, or should I wait to chime until the end of the timer? Hmm. Perhaps you do. You chime every hour. At the beginning, at Gearbox the asks, end. or at the end? Let's ah. do at the end. Thank you. Gearbox will now 
chime at the end of every hour, which is a collection of 60 minutes, which is a collection of 60 seconds, which is also a collection of many other small decimals of or, or de delineations of time. Very which good. Doesn't necessarily work here all the time. Gearbox noticed where this Gearbox has found this is a planar ship and it is. Ah. It, it is broken time in its general vicinity. I see. That does happen. Well, your timers will be incredibly helpful after after the hour. I'm excited to hear your first chime. I can chime now. Gearbox will chime now. Yes. We will, we will start the timer now. Why not? And you just hear this stone rattling chime echo from <laughs> different portions of the island that just shakes the whole thing. <laughs> What the hell was that? <laughs> Waking up everyone and ruining their sleep. Oh no. Uh, ooh, ooh. Wendell did not realize Before. that the chime was going to be that loud. He imagined like a little light chime. He's like, wow, Gearbox, what a chime. <laughs> Gearbox, very proud of chime. You How was volume? A little loud, but great clarity. Gearbox Before. can modulate vol volume. Yes, you... perhaps so that the ship does not shake. We do would hate for the structural integrity to be compromised. Oh, Gearbox only wanted to make sure those who could not hear would also notice. Thank you, Gearbox. Was Gearbox <laughs> mistaken? No, no, Gearbox. I think that was a great first chime. Now everyone knows to expect the chimes and they'll be listening for them so they don't need to be as loud. Every hour. Gearbox yes. excited. Yes. And I will message Harlan first. I will message Harlan and say, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, so sorry about that. Gearbox is setting up a clock. Um, That was the first chime. It was, um... Future chimes will be quieter. <laughs> it was... <laughs> it was, uh, yes, it was, uh... <laughs> A little overpowered, if you ask me. Um, yes, and I will, I will message Lamont before he makes rash decisions. Uh, and then I go and message Lamont. I'm like, Lamont, uh, that was the first of Gearmox's chimes. He set up a clock. We are not under attack. <laughs> Just to message okay. Lamont so that he knows that he's Lamont what? is. Did he feel? That is a question. You may have in the workshop, did he feel it? He may have heard it, right? I guess. Oh, no. Uh, in the workshop, Lamont neither heard nor felt. Ooh. Oh. the chime. Interesting. All right, and then I'll message Igor, in case Igor woke up from that. Oh, say, everyone Igor, woke up from that. Igor woke up from that, doesn't know how to hammock, so he just fell flat on his face. <laughs> oh, no. Igor, this is Wendell. Uh, uh, Everything uh, is fine. Gearbox made a clock. You can you would can tell Wintress to go back to sleep. Uh, uh, Win Wintress. If Wintress even woke up from that, you said she KO. What? Uh, the bell was uh, window was in my head. He said it's fine and to go to bed. A what? <laughs> the, the ringing is fine. Go back to bed. Window told me so. What? Okay. Igor climbs back in the hammock slowly, like a slug. And just, <laughs> when just as soon as like he stops talking, she conks out again. <laughs> All right. And then I will write Wendell's guide to the Prism of Power uh, in the remaining four hours, and uh, and also give a little speech to introduce the new clock schedule time system to the. The people. That's what I do. Okay. All right. So, as everyone is getting the remainder of their sleep, and Wendell, the gizzard of the Prison of Power, <laughs> is giving a speech about the necessity of, of a delineated time. Work life uh, balance is incredibly important. <laughs> it's, it's quite important. Um, how can I know that I'm working you overtime if there's no time to have you work over? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
um, and winter's dreams of of cold, frosty uh, fey fey lands and <laughs> and warm dragon snuggles, and and Lamont dreams of creating even more death dealing items uh, for him to wear. Uh, <laughs> we would call it a night there uh, in the land of Exandria and uh, the, what used to be Wild Mountain is now something else. So <laughs> let's go around and check with everyone and see how they're doing tonight and how they liked uh, the session and what the favorite parts were. Uh, I'd like to start tonight with our ever brooding boy, uh, the man of black himself, not a crooner that plays guitar and sings things like Ring of Fire, but Lamont Quinlan. No, no. Uh, I, I wear black for the poor and beaten down. Mm. Uh, and also the men in prison. Hi, I, I, my favorite part tonight, uh, again, was, uh, was Wintress and the Faces. <laughs> uh, it's creepy. Uh, and I love that she says uh, shit that makes Lamont go, what did she just say? And that hasn't happened quite yet uh, in the year of playing this game. Uh, so it's it's great fun. And Harlan sleeping and uh, Igor uh, eating and uh, Wendell uh, being a creep. Um, Inspiring but, leader. But I admire his pluck, you know? <laughs> I admire your verve and and you know your entrepreneurship. Hi, I'm producer Trav. We're gonna play uh, Ravenloft tomorrow, and then we're gonna play Aliens on Saturday, and it's gonna be a pip. It's gonna be a humdinger of a doozy of a something or else. So you're gonna not gonna want to miss it. And I'm excited. We've got some surprises, so uh, that's gonna be fun. So this was great. I'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you. Yes, we, we shall see you tomorrow night and then on Saturday for a wonderful, amazing alien game that everyone should not knock their microphones off for, no. but should join us on Twitch, so if Twitter, you punch YouTubes, your microphone and any enthusiasm, place you can find us. We don't blame you. Yes, that's true. Punch all the microphones and enthusiasm as long as they're yours. Yes. Um, and speaking of punching things that are yours, Harlan, flip cloak, how are you? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That was that was my that was my Lindy segue. I'm sorry. It's because you murdered your brother. What? <laughs> no. Uh, yes, I'm Harlan Flipcloak. Not the type of person to commit. Uh, Is that why you right. invented the time machine so you can go back and not have to murder your brother? <laughs> who, who knows about anything like that? Um, anyways, yes. Uh, my favorite part is just, uh, the, the cultists and like, I wonder, I wonder if they're just so used to being led that they'll do anything or if their just new cult life is so much better than their old They're That's why they're so happy to do anything. Um, but, uh, I, I do find them very funny and, uh. And uh, I enjoy this uh, um, this game. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Harley. Yeah, it's got that new cult smell. Everyone loves that. So, it, you know, it's like new car smell, but new cult smell. So, yeah. uh, let, since Igor is not quite back yet, let's check in with our agent of chaos herself, <laughs> Wintress Gilseen. Hi, that's me. I'm Nogatosaurus. I play Wintress Gilseen, the Drake Warden Ranger. Um, agent of chaos. Yeah, agent of chaos. That's I, I. I've said it before, but I've never played a character that has zero impulse control. So that's what I'm doing, and I am thoroughly enjoy, enjoying it. It's. Um, I was not expecting to take 31 bat faces or face <laughs> bats, but hey, you know, win in a cult, might as well, right? <laughs> um. Yeah, my favorite part was um, <laughs> Igor's reaction to Petal giving him the flower. Like, do, do I name him? Like, what? what's going on? I don't, like, I, I feel like we don't see a lot of Igor, and I need more of Igor because Igor is just so wholesome, and and I'm here for it. I need more ego, Igor lore. There we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, you can find me here, Mondays, Tuesdays, and the occasional Saturday. 
And the only surprise I need answered on Saturday is why the fuck are they naked? That's it. That's all I want to know. Okay. Great question. They like it. <laughs> it's it's <fair>. freeing. <laughs> it's very liberating. <laughs> mm. And uh, well, uh, since Igor hasn't quite made it back, uh, Igor, he's a barbarian. Uh, he's played by Shiny Pilot. Shiny Pilot will be here Monday nights and Tuesday nights uh, where he's playing a different character. And then on Saturday, he's playing an even better character who is about to shoot a whole bunch of naked guys uh, in, in the Black Egg. And that's going to be fun. Um, hopefully they don't get any face huggers or weird things injected in them while they're doing that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he's happy to be here. His, his favorite part was all the fun things he got to do with Petal um, or other stuff and what his master said. And he just likes playing. Thank you very much. That was that was Igor. Yeah. Um, me. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Deception Check. I'm not Igor. I'm Deception Check. I, I play the DM. I have a lot of fun doing that. It's it's entertaining. Uh, I'm also here on Tuesday nights when I'm not a DM. I'm just a player and I'm playing a monk that punches things with swords and guns, um, which is weird and awkward to punch someone with a gun, but I like to do it. And then on Saturdays as well for aliens, which will be fun. I'm in a in what a, what is right now a relatively safer space than everyone else. So we'll see how long that lasts. Uh, favorite parts tonight? Uh, honestly, Wintress grabbing all the faces because I can't wait to see the repercussions of that. Uh, Lamont uh, killing the cure for cancer um, and and just having a moment with himself. And uh, Wendell laying down the law, literally, for an entire <laughs> cult of people who are just happy to be there. Um, so, Everyone yeah. is happy in the prison of power. I don't... Oh, yes, because if they aren't, they aren't in the cult any longer because they become food. And that's, you know, that's the secret we're not telling anyone. That's what, that's what Watt's looking for. I'm going to whisper that in his ear and see if he can find it. You know, the food, the great food vats of, of worthless slaves are below the island. That's what he needs to see. But, you know, we won't get into that right now because that's not really real. But I'm going to plant it in Lamont's uh, psyche. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so let's pass that on over to Wendell Eustace Abernathy Lucius Throckwaddle Hossapfeffer IV of the Havisham Hossapfeffers. Laugh love Lindy. Thank you. Um, I will start off with my favorite thing of tonight, which was definitely um, something Harlan said in the chat once <laughs> Lamont got naked. He's like, well, it's perfect time to get naked. And just, ha ha ha, look at my body, dumb brain. I just, it killed me. It killed me a little bit. And that's what uh, made me laugh so hard, which is what Travis was like, hey, why are you laughing? I was like, it's just, oh, look at my body, dumb brain. It just, it, it, it made me laugh a lot. Um, that, I'm going to be thinking about that all week. It was pretty great. I mean, because what, I mean, yeah, he is just a brain's trapped in a jar. Yeah. But uh, that was my absolute favorite moment. But I also loved when Lamont was like, I'm sorry, what are you doing? When Wintress was starting to take all the faces, and it was just like party favors. Um, also, Wintress's sleep dep like eternal sleep deprivation apparently um, tickled me. And Reagan, Reagan's note in the in the little tent that we finally busted out. That was that was really cute. Um, so I loved all of that, and also the brains in jars just wanting to be described what food is like again. Um, the ASMR enchilada. Uh, ordeal that was that was entertaining and also them discussing color schemes like the look on deception checks face specifically when they're like we're so bored it's like well why don't you think of color schemes it's like a way to keep them busy that was that was a great gm look on the face um yeah and those are my favorite moments of tonight you can find us here tomorrow night where um if y'all like petty liches let me tell you uh there's gonna be a, a petty lich tomorrow night um, because I reread the module over the, the, the little, you know, holiday break and went, wow, this one's petty as fuck. <laughs> it was just, it was, it was a little sad how petty, um, but also mildly entertaining and I have some fun ideas. So, cannot wait. And of course on Saturday, Saturday night for Aliens, which that will be super duper fun. So check that out. Um. Uh, why are they naked? I feel like maybe, hopefully, we'll get the answer to that question because that is a big answer to my question. Um, and on that, we are going to bid you adieu till next time. 
have fun, play games. <laughs>